Church and good Sunday morning to you on this April the 11th, 2021, the second Sunday of Easter, as this service of worship emanates from the sanctuary of Greater Avery African Methodist Episcopal Church, located at 7505 Wade Park Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio, where I, the Reverend Henry F. Curtis IV, serve as pastor. We also greet you this morning on behalf of the Mother Church, St. John African Methodist Episcopal Church, located on the corner of East 40th Street and Central Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio, where I too proudly serve as senior pastor. So as we center ourselves and focus our worship to the Christ of our salvation, let us now pray that God would enter into our midst. Let us sing, enter in. traditional AME call to worship, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For in thy courts bed a thousand. I'd rather be a door keep in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wickedness. 
because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be friends in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his own temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. We will now be led in our opening prayer and the reading of our gospel lesson by the Reverend Julio A. Dixon. Praise the Lord, church. My Heavenly Father, we just come today, in this beautiful day, sunny day, Lord, just to say thank you for the blessing that you share to each one of us. My God, we just come here to praise your name and show our gratitude for everything that you give us. Because we need you every second of our life. Because without you, we are nothing. And we just come and say, thank you, Lord. My Lord, when I was a child, then tell me you want something, praise the Lord and ask him for it. But you have to believe. And we are Christians. And we believe in you, God. And we believe in your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he tells us that whatever we ask in your name, in his name, you will give it to us. My Lord, I ask you for every single person that asking you for healing to them body, healing to them soul, healing to them mind. Right now, this country is breaking two countries. We say, in one God we trust. Lead us, God. Lead us and make us one again. Let this country be led by you, my God, Jehovah God. My Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless every single children that they say poverty in this country raising to numbers that we never have in a long time. People going hunger with hunger so so many days. Please, Lord, allow us to cheer more than we have with those that don't have nothing. Help us to be a charity for those that need it, not for ourselves or for those that have more than us. Let us be like Christ, helping our brothers and sisters that need us. Especially, Lord, for every single one that's suffering from cancer, blood pressure, diabetes, dementia, and so many more infirmities that are attacking all of us in this century, Lord. Let your blessing come to us. Let the spirit the spirit, the spirit that you sent to us, the Holy Ghost, bring shower of blessing. Let your spirit bring shower, shower of blessing to every single house, to every single person. Listen to this prayer and pray for somebody. My God, let us know that you're still doing miracles, that we have to believe we have to be trust in you. 
We have to walk with Jesus all the way. We have to be a true Christian. Not plain to be Christian, but to be true Christian. Christ like. My Lord, help the church. Help the church to then open the doors one day. And we could say, come in to everybody. Doesn't matter who, how they look or who they are. Let them come to your house and worship together and praise you like one person, one voice in Christ. And that's why we pray in your name, O Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, and give thanks to the Lord. We say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Scripture lesson today is come from John 20, verse 19 to 31. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hand and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see him, see in his hand the print of the nails and place my finger in the mark of the nails and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. The door were shut but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hand, and put on your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. God word to God people. Now we're going to have a music selection from Sister Jan and Sister Bob.
the stars will applaud him with thunder. Shall enhance those awaiting, and we shall behold him in face to face. We shall. The time of his coming, the sleeping will rise with the thunder of praise. The sweet light of Then face to face, we shall behold him. We shall behold him. Face to face. We shall behold him, our Savior and Lord. Thank you, Sister Montgomery, Sister Richardson, for the fine selection. And we greet you on this second Sunday of Easter, still proclaiming that Christ is the risen Lord. So we thank and praise God for you, for tuning in with us wherever you are. And please be sure to say hello to us in the chat 
And we know that we have many of you watching us from all over uh, the greater Cleveland area, all over uh, Ohio, and all over the nation. And as we look at this, we've even reached as far as uh, the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland. So uh, wherever you are, uh, anywhere in the world, know that our love and greetings are with you this morning. It's also a joy to be here uh, celebrating uh, this Easter season. We were at uh, St. John last Sunday on Easter Sunday, and now we're at our sister church, Greater Avery, today. And as you see, we're adorned in white, and we thank our communion stewardess, uh, Sister Ross, for preparing the altar for us. And also, while we're here at Greater Avery, we want to congratulate Brother Delonzo Curgis for the fine uh, accomplishments that he's achieved uh, while in school. So some great things are happening uh, here at both of our churches, and we're just doubly blessed that God has given us a double portion, and we thank and praise God for that. Give him glory and praise. Also here at Greater Avery, uh, we can see it here. I don't know if it's showing up on the camera, but there's more light in the sanctuary because the house that was next door to us uh, has been torn down. The uh, ground is flat, and there's been seed planted for a new lawn next door. Amen. Somebody ought to give God thanks and praise. So we're just grateful today uh, to be here in this place and to be with you virtually as we celebrate Christ. I'd like to turn your attention to the gospel lesson read earlier by the Reverend Dixon, John the 20th chapter, verses 19 through 31. And while I'll refer to several portions of the text, the main portion that I'm going to focus in on are verses 19 through 23, with specific attention paid to the 23rd verse. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. I'd like you to think with me and pray with me this morning on the theme relevant to our subject matter, post-resurrection experience. Let us pray. Lord, speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of thy tone, as thou hast sought, so let me seek thine erring children lost and lone. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Christ's holy name we pray, amen. Today, the Sunday after Easter, is one of the most interesting Sundays in the life of the Christian church year. Many informally refer to the Sunday after Easter as quote-unquote low Sunday. Why? Because the Sunday after Easter is more often than not met with low interest, low energy, low attendance, and, you guessed it, low giving. The joy and the mystery surrounding Jesus' glorious resurrection one week ago is now a distant memory to many. However, I stand before you on this glorious Sunday morning and declare that the resurrection is just as real and as relevant today as it was last week. Have I got a witness? Amen. See, God raised Jesus from the dead. And in so doing, Jesus' resurrection is not simply a singular event of history. Rather, the resurrection is an ongoing manifestation of Christ's presence, a presence that impacts and transcends time, space, and eternity. Because the same Jesus, whom the women first saw in the garden, but did not immediately recognize is the same Jesus who walks with us today. He's the same Jesus we pray will be with us tomorrow. And he's the same Jesus whose death and resurrection gives us hope and assurance for eternal life. In other words, church, 
the resurrection must mean something to us as Christian believers. The resurrection must mean more than simply one Sunday on the calendar. And it must even mean more than God changing Jesus' dead body into a glorified, raised new existence. Because I've come here today to tell you that we have experiences with Jesus post-resurrection. See, Jesus, who was crucified, dead, and buried, was different after his resurrection. He wasn't immediately recognizable. And he wasn't to be touched. For if you remember in, in John, the 20th chapter, in the, the earlier verses, when, when Mary went to the garden early in the morning and, and she wanted to reach out and hug him, reach out and touch him, Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended back to my father and your father, my God and your God. Yes, church, Jesus changed after the resurrection. But the real question that I have for you this morning is that Jesus changed, but did we change? See, now that we're living under grace due to Jesus shedding his blood on the cross for the remission of our sins, now that resurrection grace is fully upon us, Something about our Christian journey ought to be changed for the better. That's why after Easter Sunday, some of us come back to church the next week because the resurrection that changed Christ has touched us in a way that we too are now changed. To better appreciate what I'm saying, it's useful for us to consider St. John the Evangelist, the one who wrote the gospel bearing his name. In my time of preparation and, and study, I, I read an interesting commentary last week and want to share with you what one commentator wrote. And I quote, for John, the import of the resurrection has less to do with changing Jesus' status than it does with revealing Jesus' status as Lord. In John's post-crucifixion stories, what is emphasized is not the raising of Jesus. We are told nothing about how this occurs. What is emphasized instead is the experience of Jesus' resurrection had by those close to Jesus. Jesus got up from the grave. Now what? Jesus, who was dead, is now alive. Now what? How does that impact uh, uh, Andrew? How does that impact Peter? How does that impact James? How does that impact John? How does the raised Christ impact greater Avery? How does the raised Jesus impact St. John? How are we different because Christ was raised from the dead? See, that puts the ball squarely in our court in that the risen Christ is one whom we experience in a way that is different from before. Today's text, if you read it carefully, continues the story from the actual day of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. John, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 18, tell us what happened early in the morning, and now the scene shifts to the evening of the same day. The gospel tells us the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. After Jesus shows them his wounds, they rejoice that they saw the Lord. And Jesus once again re repeats his greeting, peace be with you. Twice in these verses, Jesus bestows peace upon his troubled disciples. Disciples who were locked in a room for fear of being killed by the same people who killed Jesus. Disciples who dropped their nets and left all that was familiar to them to follow this radical itinerant rabbi through Judea of Galilee. Disciples whose ministries seemingly ended in failure. I have a newsflash for you this morning, church. 
Jesus speaking peace into their lives at that moment is a major part of the story. Because when we read it and connect the dots to truly experience the risen Lord and to appreciate his presence in your life, you first must be in a place of peace. See, going back to the earlier verses of John 20, Mary was distraught when she thought Jesus' body had been taken away. But when he called her name, she recognized him and the risen Christ's peace comforted her troubled soul. Church, take comfort in knowing the risen Christ knows the things that trouble our hearts. He knows what's keeping us up at night. He knows what's troubling us as individuals. He also knows what's troubling us as a community. He knows the stress and the strain people are under to make it day by day. He knows the pain and the frustration of congregations who have now gone a second Easter without gathering in person. He knows the anxiety of our society as we watch with interest the case involving Derek Chauvin in the George Floyd killing. And to these persons and to these situations, I've got good news for you this morning. The risen Christ walks to us and he says, peace be with you. Jesus is saying, I've been to the cross. I've been to the grave. I've seen the worst of the worst. And God brought me back to show you the way to peace and victory in your life. Don't leave Easter the last week. You've come here today because God has peace and victory for you right here and right now. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. See, the disciples needed peace. They were anxious and they were troubled. They were fearing for their very lives because in their minds, Jesus was still dead. They needed peace. But look at the next frame. Jesus gives them peace after he appears to them and then he has work for them to do. See, Jesus didn't rise just for the sake of rising. He rose to work and in his work, he rose to commission followers to go forth in his name and continue his work. See, Jesus did the hardest part of the work on the cross. But now the risen Lord is telling his disciples and he's telling us, you still have some heavy lifting to do. You say, well, brother pastor, where did you get that from? I'm glad you asked. Look at the text. In verses 21 and 22, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. Oh, I've come to work. Now I've come back to put you to work. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. See, Jesus sends his disciples as God sent him. And he breathes on them and gives them a person that he knows they'll surely need. Somebody say the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he gives them the Holy Spirit. And then he tells them in verse 23, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now I know we're in Easter church, but just for a moment, Let's go back to Good Friday. And while we're in Good Friday, let us stop once again by the cross. See, Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of sin. He shed his blood as the atoning sacrifice for sin. The songwriter understood this when he said, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The author of Hebrews, in Hebrews the ninth chapter in the 22nd verse says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. There is no forgiveness. So what Jesus is saying, church, and you need to understand me and get this this morning, Jesus is basically saying, I did the work 
of forgiving sin on the cross. And now I'm coming back as your risen and victorious Lord to let you know that it is your theological task to go out and be an agent of forgiveness, an agent of healing, an agent of reconciliation in my name. See, church, I read this. And the Holy Spirit dropped it on me to help somebody. This text is telling us that in our post-resurrection experience with Jesus, there's just some stuff that at some point we need to drop and let go. Right. Amen, Pastor That's Curtis. Right. That's right. That's right. Carrying around too much junk, too many burdens, too much garbage and yeah. trash in our soul that needs to be cleaned out right here and right now. Because Jesus said, if we forgive sin, then sin is forgiven. If we retain sin, then sin is retained. Let me help somebody during this season of the resurrection. Stop holding on to hurt feelings. Stop carrying grudges that are disrupting your peace. Some of you are mad at folks that aren't even thinking about you. They, you don't even cross their mind and you're still mad with them. It's time to let some of that stuff go. I know I'm right about it. See, Christ forgave you. And now it's time for you to forgive and to move on with the rest of your life in the joy of the risen Christ. Now, I know that sometimes that's easier said than done. I know that there are some things that people do that take time and prayer and more time and more prayer to get over. Amen? But I'm telling somebody under the sound of my voice this morning to at least start the process. Take one step towards forgiveness. Take one step towards reconciliation and trust that God will walk with you every step of the way and that by his grace, he'll take you to a place that you would not get to by yourself. Amen. See, that's the beauty of the risen Christ. Because the risen Christ in our post-resurrection experiences with him ministers to us and allows us to go forth as agents of grace in his name. See, church, on the night of his resurrection, the latter portion of John, the 20th chapter, tells us that Jesus paid a visit to his disciples, disciples who were locked in a room with fear. And when he went to visit them, he bare gifts he took them gifts that only a risen Christ could give them. He gave them his peace. He gave them the Holy Spirit. And he gave them the authority to forgive sins. I have good news for you this morning, church. These three things alone, if taken seriously and if applied to our lives, change our post-resurrection experience with Jesus for the better. If we can walk around with the peace of Christ in our heart. Yes. If we can walk around anointed by the Holy Ghost. Yes. If we can walk around being able to forgive as God has forgiven us. Then our lives will be changed for the better. Right. See when you read the part of the text that deals with Thomas. You will see where Thomas's post-resurrection experience with Jesus was also one that was filled with grace. He was not there when Jesus originally appeared. Doesn't say where he was, and we're not going to deal much with Thomas today. But guess what? Post-resurrection grace was extended to Thomas. Because the Bible says, okay, Thomas, you missed me today. Eight days later, he came back to show Thomas. I've come here today to say that if you've missed something, Jesus is going to come back and he's going to keep coming back and keep coming back to the day when he shows you what he has to show you. And by the end of the experience that Thomas had, what did Thomas say? He said, my Lord and my God. This makes it clear that the resurrection is real. This makes it clear that the resurrection is not simply confined to one day or one event 
on the Calvary. That the risen Christ is indeed real. That the risen Christ is a living, breathing human person. And as a pastor, it's a privilege and a joy to preach about and to lead others to this risen Christ. And the tragedy is that so many people, no matter how we preach or how we minister or how we witness, so many people choose not to accept him. Now most, if not all of us, know someone who falls into that category. And as I thought about my responsibilities to you this morning, a person that I know popped into my mind. He, he's not a friend of mine, but someone that I run into occasionally, and he's one that I would refer to as being an evangelical atheist. Now I'm aware that that term is an oxymoron in and of itself. And I say that he's an evangelical atheist in that he has no faith in God and goes so far as to try to persuade others that faith in God is pointless and even anti-intellectual. Now let me tell you, from my interactions with this individual over the years, I find him to be intelligent, professional, kind, decent, fair, and just. He is a decent human being. But I also see a brokenness and, and an emptiness that I don't know him well enough to explain or sort out. So what do I do? I pray for him. And I pray that one day, whatever pain or whatever events in his life that led him to embrace and espouse atheism, that those issues one day are resolved. I pray that the day will come when he can live with the peace that only the risen Christ can offer. I pray that the day will come when he will have the breath of the Lord breathe the fresh wind of the Holy Ghost in his life. I pray that the day will come when he will know with certainty that his sins are forgiven by Jesus who died for him on the cross. See, church, it's not my job to judge him. It's not my job to pull out a Bible and, and thump him across the head, but I can put his name on the altar and know that God can do what I can't do, that the God who created him is the God who can save him. So what do we do? I reciprocate the kindness and the courtesy that he's shown me and trust that God will do the rest. See, I've said all of that to you this morning to simply say this. Today is not low Sunday. Today is not a day to write off and to go back to business as usual. Today is a different day because the crucified Christ who was raised from the dead is still alive, right. active, and working in our lives. See, Jesus' resurrection makes a difference in how we experience him and in how we live our faith. Our post-resurrection experience with the risen Lord is essential as he continues to work out things in our lives. Why? Because I've come here today to tell you that Jesus is real. And if he's real, and he is, if Jesus' blood on the cross saves us from our sin, and it does, if Jesus is raised from the dead, and he is, if the risen Christ is glorified, and he is, if Jesus has the power to change lives, and he does, then he will continue to save the least and the lost. That's why we at St. John many times during the, the intro, we would, we would sing, Jesus, stand among us in thy risen power, because we know that as you come today, Lord, you can do some things now that you couldn't do before God raised you from the dead. You've come back with a glorified body. You've come back with a glorified presence. You're the one who can walk through doors that are locked. You're the one, oh God, who can breathe that the Holy Spirit falls fresh on somebody else. Jesus, 
in this post-resurrection Sunday, come among us. Jesus, stand among us. Jesus, anoint us. Jesus, speak to us. Jesus, cleanse our hearts. Jesus, just come. While on others, thou art calling, Lord, do not pass me by. I'm glad you logged on today. I'm glad a few of my friends stopped by today. Because I didn't want to miss him today. Thomas missed him. We, we're not going to deal much with that. He missed him, but he came back. But I've come here today to tell you, for those who missed him today, he's coming back next week. That we continue to have post-resurrection experiences with Jesus. We rejoice today because the risen Christ enters through walls that keep folks locked up in fear. We rejoice today because the risen Lord brings peace to troubled minds. We rejoice today because the risen Christ breathes life in the moribund souls. We rejoice today because the risen Christ authorizes the forgiveness of sin. We rejoice today because the risen Christ restores broken relationships. The risen Christ returns to make sure that no one is left behind. And the risen Christ stops by to commission us, his believers, to do ministry in his name. Oh, church, today, my prayer for you is your pastor is that you will have a post-resurrection experience with Jesus. And that just as the resurrection altered Jesus' appearance to the point where he was not immediately recognizable, that your post-resurrection life with Christ will alter you to the point where you are now more recognized as one of his faithful disciples. Thanks be to God. Amen. It's invitation time. And someone listening today may not have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. You may have heard the gospel. You may have even been to church. But you don't have the blessed assurance in your soul that you're saved. This is your time in this post-resurrection season to have a saving experience with Christ who died, Christ who rose, and Christ who shall come again. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus Christ, come into my life. Live your life in me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew. Wash me with your blood. Forgive me of my, my sins. And set my feet on the golden pathway of righteousness that leads to life everlasting. This and all things I ask in your name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, we welcome you with joy into the household of faith. Please write to me at Greater Avery African Methodist Episcopal Church, 7505 Wade Park Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio, 44103. Please call area code 216-459-7679 or send us an email to greateraveryame at gmail.com. We also offer St. John African Methodist Episcopal Church to you this morning, 2261 East 40th Street, Cleveland, Ohio, 44103. You may call us at area code 216-431-2560 or email us at stjohnamechurchclev at gmail.com. We want to hear from you today. As persons respond to the invitation, Sister Richardson will lead us in our song of invitation. Yes, God is real. some things I may not know 
and every one of you who have been dutiful, diligent, faithful in bringing your tithes and your offerings to the storehouse, either by dropping them off during the week or sending them via U.S. mail. For those of you supporting Greater Avery, we thank and praise God for you. Please make your check out to Greater Avery AME Church and mail that in care of St. John AME to 2261 East 40th Street, Cleveland, Ohio, 44103. You may also go to Greater Avery, Avery's Givelify Digital Giving site and give your offering and tithes through our digital giving portal. For St. John, please make your check out to St. John AME Church. You mail that to 2261 East 40th Street, Cleveland, Ohio, 44103. Or you too may go directly to our Givelify digital giving portal and give your time and offering. So let us now give our best to God. that you gave us your best, your son, Jesus Christ, the one who brings us peace, the one who fills us with his Holy Spirit, and the one who authorizes the forgiveness of sin. Accept these gifts, bless them, and use them for your glory. This in all things we ask, in the name of Christ our Lord, amen. few announcements. Uh, Greater Cleveland Congregations has training on house meetings on Tuesday, April the 13th, and on Saturday, April the 24th. The information is in your bulletin and the hyperlinks are there where you may register. Also, two announcements that are not in your bulletin, but one I believe appears on our Facebook site, is that the AME Connectional Day of Prayer is this Tuesday, April the 13th at 12 o'clock noon, and if you go to St. John's AME site, we'll have the 
uh, the brochure, uh, the digital flyer there, and we'll have the log on information for you for the AME Connectional Day of Prayer on Tuesday at 12 noon. It will be a virtual event as well. Also for both St. John and Greater Avery, we will have our second quarterly conference on Wednesday, April the 21st, 2021, with presiding elder Dr. John McCants. St. John, we will have our quarter at 6 o'clock p.m. In Greater Avery, we'll have our quarter at 6.45 p.m. All reports will be due to me on next Sunday, April the 18th, and I will also send this information out to you via email, and we will post this as well on our social media site. God bless you and thank you so much for being with us today. And let us now conclude our time of worship with our closing song. May the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now, henceforth, and forevermore. Thank you so much for being with us. Have a great rest of the day, a great week, and we look forward to seeing you again on next Sunday at 1045, where we will broadcast from the sanctuary of St. John African Methodist Episcopal Church. God bless you and goodbye.